Good morning from the Bavarian Alps. It's uh, been a lovely few days here in Germany. The sun's shone and we've been up in the mountains and enjoying ourselves. And we just like grab five minutes to record another 10 minute Tuesdays. Now, these have been uh, a reasonably successful series. People have enjoyed them, as so they've told us, but we are starting to run out with, of ideas now. So we've never wanted to actually pursue an idea beyond its, its, its shelf life. Um, so we are sort of coming to dry up a little bit. But if you've got any ideas that uh, you wanted to talk about, then we'll gladly consider them and that might extend the series a little bit. But otherwise, I don't foresee these um, sessions going on for too much longer. Uh, I think it's important to be relevant and, and, and not, not to flog a dead horse, as we used to say uh, back in Yorkshire. And so this week, we're going to talk about Stellplatzes and their derivatives across Europe and how to get the best out of them. And these are questions that we've been asked quite a lot, um, and it's, we think it's quite an interesting topic. So we'll start the clock and get going. Now, when it comes to motorhoming and uh, travelling in your van across Europe, flexibility is the key. And Stellplatzes do uh, give you that flexi flexibility. They sit between the more formal campsites and the very informal uh, off-grid park-ups, the type of things that you might see either in urban laybys uh, or in, in rural destinations that are not at all planned they're just there sometimes they're on park for nights but generally speaking it's off grid in and it, and it's and it's finest and we've done all three of these things but um but today i want to particularly talk about stellplatzes now you might hear uh, these uh, areas referred to as stellplatzes which is the case in germany in austria you might also hear them called airs in france but not to be confused with the service areas on motorways more on that in a minute you might also hear them called wallmobile uh, platzes in germany or Reismobile platzes even sometimes in Germany. Um, but in all courses, so in Spain, you might hear them called uh, or area de autocaravanas or simply sosters in Italy. All the same things. They're all park-ups um, where it's authorised to park, usually commercial ventures, but not exclusively, sometimes run by local authorities. Sometimes the, you can park on, uh, they have these areas on vineyards, uh, vineyards, should I say, or in supermarket areas, or they can, they can come in all sorts, shapes and sizes, but they're basically all the same thing. They are somewhere to park your motorhome overnight or for a couple of nights with varying degrees of facilities. Now, usually with these things, camping behaviour is not permitted. You're not permitted to get your chairs out, tables out, although you will see people doing this, but technically speaking, that's not the function of, a, of an air or a stellplatz. It's to provide you with somewhere to park for the night or during the day even where you can go off and do things. Sometimes there's are no overnight parking. Sometimes it's just motor 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 areas for daytime parking. But I'm extensively talking about areas where you can park for the night. There is also some commercial entities like camping car parks, which are airs, which uh, you can pay uh, join the scheme and you can use. And we've been using them for about five for years now, quite successfully, uh, where you can look through an app and see about see availability on an air, how many parking spaces are available, and you can go and preload a card and uh, and pay for it and work uh, and, and use the camping car parks quite successfully. Now, what we like best about these Stellplatzes or airs is the freedom. Um, you can move around and drop into these things as and when you want to. You don't need to book, although some of them you can. And the exception to us booking might be somewhere like Berlin, where we wanted to be in a specific location. So we did book into the air Stellplatz in, in Berlin to make sure we could actually get to where we needed to be which was right at the side of the Berlin Underground and facilitated the experience that we had there. And when we're using um, airs or Stellplatzes, we have a golden rule. We try to arrive uh, always before three, but ideally around one, one thirty. At busy times, these will get uh, very, uh, it will get competitive for places. Certainly we're out here now and it's September in Germany and three o'clock and, and the, the Stellplatzes have been full. And uh, that's been the case across the romantic road, speaking to other people as well. Sometimes it's a good idea not to leave it too late before you get to Stellplatz. Otherwise, you might find it full and you've got to go hunting around for somewhere else to park. Now, it's important that when we're talking about st Stellplatzes and airs, that you see that there's a variety. Now, we've recommended Stellplatzes or airs to people who are inexperienced and have sort of come back to us a little bit miffed and said it was just a car park. Well, yes, that's what some of them are. And they're perfectly safe and they're legitimate and they're on the, they're on the wraps and sometimes... That's what you get. You get a car park. Sometimes you might get water. Sometimes you might get um, toilet emptying. Uh, you, more often than not, you'll get these basic facilities. Sometimes you get water. Sometimes you get hook up. And then sometimes it's free and sometimes it is, it's at a cost. Sometimes it's at a premium cost. Sometimes these stellplatzes can be 40 euros a night if it's in a premium location. Like, 
And sometimes it can just be two or three euros on a pay, on a pay meter to uh, to actually stay uh, on on the on the area. Sometimes as well, you have to walk and get a ticket from a local town office. There are varieties of different types of stale plasters. There's no one fit. Now, in terms of free um, areas to park, France will stand out probably as the one that's got the most of these. It's probably the, the nation that's most equipped for uh, airs and stale plasters, followed by Germany, which is also very good. Uh, Germany's a particular favourite of ours because of the standard of the stale plasters that you find. They tend to be, in our opinion, uh, tip top. But, uh, but you will get uh, other areas where you think sometimes, should I stay here? But there is generally always a sign that tells you whether it's an official park up or not. And you can be, you, if it says you're allowed to park there, then you can take confidence and you can carry on. Now, when it comes to security, your own natural comfort, which is important. Like I said, these friends of ours who, who we recommended a Stellplatz to were, had never been on a, on a car park type Stellplatz in a rural village before. And the fact that it was shared with other things like buses and cars um, worried them a little bit. So you've got to find something that's comfortable for you. And our our sort of advice on that is you, your own gut will tell you whether enough you feel comfortable to stay the night here. But also from the from the point of crime, again, your own gut feeling in terms of crime will will uh, make you sort of decide whether to stay or not. Our suggestion would be that that your first instinct will be the right one. The things to watch really are really bikes and break-ins to the vehicle when it's unattended. Break-ins of any kind to your vehicle are very rare and almost exclusively reserved to the service areas in France and places like that where really general advice is not to stay the night. So I can't say it loud enough again, do not stay the night on a motorway air in France. They are not really the same thing that I'm talking about today. There are some other security implications as well to think about. Obviously, Common sense dictates if you stay overnight in the city centre, even if it's legitimate, if it's near to pubs and clubs, then you can expect some noise. If you sleep at the side of a railway station, you can expect some noise. But generally speaking, as long as you know what you're getting and you're happy with to take that on, then you'll manage that quite well. Things like bikes need to be watched, particularly for insurance companies, because there are uh, implications if your bike is not locked with a D-lock. Sometimes our own insurance company insists on a platinum or a gold standard d-lock and it won't um, uh, take the the wire that comes with the lock you can't fasten your bike with that it's got to be with the d-lock onto the frame and it's got to be fastened to something that's embedded into the ground and concreted there so uh, to a fence to a bit of fencing or to a uh, sometimes even to a bike rack sometimes might be a problem for your insurance company and needs to be checked out also while we're talking about insurance companies and, and, and bikes a bit of a side issue, but you need to make sure that your single article claim limit covers the cost of your bike, particularly if you've got an expensive e-bike. But let me re-emphasize, crime against motorhome is exceptionally small. In fact, personally, I think you're more likely to get be a victim of crime in the UK than you are in, in most places in Europe. Uh, inner city areas aside, uh, it's a very safe pastime, very safe hobby. And the instances that do occur tend to get an awful lot of coverage, disproportionately so, to the chances of the crime of ever happening to you. It's extremely low. Well, that's Hopi Less Than 10 Minutes talking about Stellplatz as airs. We use the apps, as we've described in the previous video, to find these airs. It does never really let us down. Camper Contact being our favourite one, followed by Search for Sites, followed by Park for Nights, and so on and so forth. And, uh, and as I say, this is not to suggest that camping on sites is preferable or, or camping off-grid completely is preferable. This is purely a discussion around Stellplatzes and, uh, and something that, uh, an environment that we particularly enjoy. Martin out.